Like so many kids growing up, I dreamed of going to space. I told people I wanted to be an astrophysician, studying how medicine might change for human bodies in space. Most adults told me I meant astrophysics. I didn't. But as I grew up and became disabled, I knew I would never meet the requirements for an astronaut. Well, no space for me. Fast forward to a year ago. I was navigating a friend's kitchen in my wheelchair, holding a bowl of spaghetti in one hand and pushing off of countertops and refrigerators with another. My chair would glide across the stone floor, momentum keeping its wheels rolling until I stopped myself by pushing against some other object. I've always felt connected to the physics of my wheelchair, but in that moment I had a vivid image of astronauts navigating the International Space Station, pulling themselves along railings and walls, gliding, grabbing nearby objects to stop themselves. <laughs> the similarity struck me like a rocket. If anything, I was perfectly suited to go to space. I had been training for it for years. Space belongs to me just as much as anyone else, if not more. If my experiences in a chair gave me a more intuitive understanding of zero gravity, what other disabilities on Earth might have unique value in space? I couldn't stop thinking about the possibility of other crypts in space. Wait. Crips in space. Just the name sounded brilliant. I took it to Twitter as a hashtag, and from there it has had a life of its own. Alice Wong came aboard and recommended the magnificent folks at the Deaf Poets Society as potential collaborators on a Crips in Space project. I am so thrilled to have the opportunity as a guest editor to benefit from their institution, their skills, and their brilliance. They've brought this project to life. Now it's our turn. Crips in Space is absolutely about the amazing speculation and stories that can come from imagining ourselves and our community in the future. But there's more to it than that. It's about staking a claim on our role in the future, just as manned moon missions planted humanity beyond the confines of low Earth orbit. In too many stories, an advanced society is seen as one that's eradicated deafness and disability. The gentle eliminationism of cure politics pervades speculative society, as if all deaf and disabled people seek to be cured or could be, as if our ways of being have nothing to offer society, and society would be better off without us. Indeed, it seems as a mark of civilization that we no longer exist. Even as speculative societies imagine a broad diversity of minds and bodies, they too often remain rooted in the assumption that there's one best way to be human, and that we would inevitably seek that ideal rather than benefit from diversity ourselves. This makes Crips in Space not just fascinating, but radical. We're not just telling the world that we have a place in the future, but through our creations, showing them what that looks like. So many of our barriers are caused by society, and through speculation, we can shape societies in our own image, societies that let us show what we can do when we're allowed to flourish. And just as importantly, Crips in Space is for us. We have to tell our stories as no one else can, sharing the unique experiences that bring us together and imagining the new experiences we might have. The deadline to submit and share these ideas is coming up soon, April the 4th. We're looking for fiction and nonfiction stories, essays, art, and poetry. Get creating and show us what it's like to have crypts in space.